Why do people lie? Well, there's many reasons why a person might well lie, and typically there's two big types of uh, liars that I tend to engage with who are making remarkable uh, spiritual mystical claims, and I thought I'd just mention those two types. The first type is the most obvious, the person shifting a product, even if that product is imaginary, like healing, or like the mystical magical properties from an ancient piece of glass. Well, what real product is there? A lump of glass or a person laying their hands on you or near to you? Or some other claim of some kind of mystical magical energy? For money, of course. Thereafter, cash. They want you to buy into this, buy into that, buy into something which supposedly does some good in some way, shape or form, and that is their reason. Why do they lie? They want you to buy. Now, there's the other kind, and there is an overlap between these two. These are not mutually exclusive by any means. The other kind are basically those who are not prioritising money, not prioritising the sale, the scam, whatever you wish to call it. They are prioritising how they feel. It doesn't sound so bad on the surface of things. But what they feel, what they wish to convey, is a sense of self-importance, this egocentric element, to other people. They wish to convey that they are very important, the knowledge they're bringing forward, very important. They're part of this big movement of people, or perhaps it's not even a big movement. Perhaps they're right at the centre of things, and they think they are on the cutting edge. And by me putting the word out there, I am becoming a nexus for knowledge. That might be what they think. A hint of narcissism in there? Oh, most certainly. The successful narcissistic potential cult leader um, eventually becomes a cult leader, usually. <laughs> you know, if they want to become a person with a following, and if they want money, they can get money too, but if they want to become a person at the centre of a new religious movement, a spiritual movement, an awareness movement, whatever the case may be, a person with a charismatic personality could get a, quite a following, could get a following of thousands of people, maybe more. And there are many people who are rich and famous who manage to tailor a sort of uh, persona in order to develop a following, but that's a whole other video. But there are people who are less developed, their personality is not something you really want to hold on to and bring into your life. And they might develop a following too, but nowhere near as big. They might spout certain ideas, certain words, and it might be all original for that matter. But uh, unfortunately, they don't really have the charisma. But they still demand to be the centre of attention. They still claim to be uh, the godhead in human form. They still claim to be uh, a highly important person, a person with higher knowledge from the Ascended Masters, from God, from Jesus, from Muhammad, from the Buddha. By reaching a higher level of consciousness, they've reached a level of a uh, Orion or Arcturian or um, <laughs> Draconian aliens, or they've mingled with the angels and the archangels, and they're going to channel them now by making a high-pitched hum before they go off into a very dull and not very clever speech and character. Whatever the case, they might claim to be chosen by God as the end times prophet. In any case, they place themselves at the centre of a world. A centre of a world which they, of course, are the master of, or the mistress, or whatever you wish to say. Ego is a huge thing for many of these people, and many of these people are not going to be those who really get anywhere. They're going to be fools ranting into their webcams for the entertainment of YouTube or perhaps even TikTok or whatever the case may be. Because some people out there don't really engage with reality. They would rather believe in the fantasy. And unfortunately, although that does increase their confidence and perhaps stop them from being uh, slumped into a depression, it also means that they're usually running with ideas which might not necessarily be the most realistic and could even be potentially harmful in some cases, depending on the practices and ideas involved. False information always has consequences and can be quite dangerous. And whether it comes down to the person passing on those ideas, whether it's for profit in terms of you know, cash, or whether it's profit in their own mind in terms of an ego boost, 
or a sense of being an important personality, in any case, the ideas they pass on might well be harmful. Now, how could they be harmful? Well, let's include certain energetic ideas that make people reject modern medicine. Certain notions of you don't need vaccines because you've got herbal remedies. When things go too far, they can be quite dangerous. And usually those people passing on the ideas are usually fairly innocent. They're the people buying into the ideas, not those actually creating the ideas. But those who are making a buck off it keep on pushing ridiculous ideas, and some of those ridiculous ideas are sometimes harmful. At the very least, it will mean you won't achieve some of your life goals because you'll be too busy looking through crystals or trying to uh, pick sage so you can do a smudging session to remove any dark spirits from your home or giving a bunch of your earnings to the uh, evangelical church, the uh, mega church, because you believe that is the best way to get the best results in your life from God. And those people with the high egos, those people with the great egos, if they could, they would make you a slave to them and their ego trip. So the best thing to do with anyone who's trying to shift you a product, especially a remarkable, fantastic, indeed, uh, nigh upon fantasy product, is to question every facet of it, not simply buy into the claims being made. You can be sceptical without being negative, and you can be critical without hurting people's feelings. This is a documentary piece by the BBC. No, not at all.